Um, the walkthrough is the same thing, but we start at $100. So depending on how big the house is, how long we're going to be there, you know, it's usually, I, I've never charged anybody more than 200 for the walkthrough. It's usually like 125 but that's the price range that we're normally in. So would you inspect areas that you were not able to have access to at that point? Yes. Okay. If, if so they're that saying will be if they're going to have, yes. Anything that we wouldn't have access to. And we also do follow-up inspections too. They're all around the same price. So if we went to the house, like a lot of REOs, the bank won't turn the utilities on until you're in contract. So we'll do the inspection at first, come up with everything. The people say, okay, I want to buy the house. They'll sign the contract. Then they'll the bank will put the utilities on. We'll come back usually for like 150 bucks and actually make sure everything's working. And then the nice part about that is it solves all the problems before the day before closing. So I always recommend if the lawyer puts something in contract, they need to fix it, don't wait to the day before closing because then you're finding out if they fixed it or not that day. Mm. You know, if they say, hey, listen, I'm gonna put a light here or whatever, the day they say they fixed it is the day you want to go look at it. You go look at it, now you're good, you go another couple of weeks and you're happy. The longer you wait, the more complicated everything gets. So the last question, last question. All Just right. because you said that you buy a lot of properties, I want to know how do you buy your properties, what do you get, like the majority of them, if that's okay? If not, you can say that, you can go there and say I would not speak. But I'm curious, right, we're all here to learn and we want to know, okay, if you're making money getting homes, how do you do that? It's not going to benefit you what I'm about to it's say. It's okay. But. No, listen, I'm here to help everybody um, educate. I want to buy more houses too. I don't buy anything in New York. Okay. I have so my own. house here and that's it. Um, the laws here just changed too yes. much for me. Um, the, you know, I, I, live on Long, I live in Long Island. So anything city-wise, the rents here are great. But I feel like if I'm not there close enough, I can't deal with it. And like you said it a few times. If somebody stops paying their mortgage, they could live for three years. If somebody stops paying their rent, they could get some pretty good time on that house yep. on my dime. Mm -hmm. So I don't really look in New York because I like being in charge of everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I personally, I buy in Pennsylvania and I buy in Florida. Got it. Florida, yeah. I buy vacation rentals like in Orlando, Disney area. Mm -hmm. In Pennsylvania, I buy anything. Mm -hmm. um, I have multifamilies. I have... Uh, mm -hmm condos, whatever, yeah. I could, could, you could go there and get a really good deal, you know, I might walk Your out. Your dollar will go farther, for sure. I might walk out with, uh, you know, the last house I bought was a condo was like $30,000, you know. I have a question, somebody asked me if they want to buy a house in Pennsylvania, what part of Pennsylvania can I, be nice and cheap? Market? He said anywhere Pennsylvania. Well, yeah. Pennsylvania's really, really big. big. Like, yeah. if you start driving to Pennsylvania, I kind of, yeah, eight hours across. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm like, the Jersey border, so like the Poconos, the uh, Philly area, that area over there. Because I, like I said, I, I'm one of those people, if they call me up and say, you got to be here, I'm jumping in the car and I'm three hours away. So it has to be where I could kind of get there. Um, but I like, you know, those areas have good deals. Thank you. I think that's it. I don't know if you guys have any other questions. Yep. All right. You mentioned you do not deal with code when you come to inspect the home. Whose responsibility is it to get that home up to code? Is it the person who's gonna come in and renovate? It, it's kind of tricky because what happens with code is, say you're buying a house, uh, you know, we're, we're in Queens right here. You know, a lot of these things were built in the 1920s and 1930s. Um, the code was very different back then. It's nobody's responsibility to bring it up to code unless you start doing construction. So if you're buying a house that's built in 1930, it is what it is. You don't, the, the town can't come in there and say, hey, you need to change this out, you need to change that out. So what happens is they either you start doing construction. Once you start doing the construction, the town's going to come in there and say, well, this isn't up to code. Well, that isn't up to code. And the more stuff you did that you didn't get the permits for, the more stuff they're going to call out. So if the house looks like it was from 1930 and nothing was brought up to code, they might not say nothing. But if they walk in the house and you have a new deck, a new kitchen, a new this, they might say, well... Where's the COs? Now you need to bring it all up to code. So as you start doing work, it's your responsibility to bring it up to code, so it'll be your contractor's responsibility. But basically up until that point, like it's, there's a lot of things where it, it gets very complicated because, you know, some things are safety items. So like GFCIs in the kitchen and in the bathroom, we call that out on every job. That's a safety item. So it's technically bringing it up to code by putting the GFCIs there, but it's also a safety item. 
So sometimes the seller will do it because you want them to do it, and other times when you move in, you do it. 